Hey everybody, welcome back to The Way of Ramen. Well, today we're finally doing it. We're making a real bowl of ramen, not this shortcut stuff that I've been doing and experimenting with videos with. This is a recipe for a shoyu tonkotsu gyokai ramen. Well, it's not really a real gyokai ramen, it's just a tonkotsu ramen that's loosely based on a gyokai ramen recipe. But anyways, if you haven't seen some of the previous videos I've done, like the shoyu tare recipe and the uh, chashu recipe, you should go check those out because we're using them in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So before we get started with the tonkotsu soup, we're going to be making a quick chicken oil. Well, not really quick, it takes about an hour, but it's very simple. You just get a bunch of chicken skin and you put some water in a pot and you boil it for an hour. And the water evaporates and you're left with just chicken oil. And if you want, you can add some aromatics like I do here. I put some ginger and some green onion in and you just bring that back to a boil and that infuses some of the flavor into the oil. And that's basically it. You got chicken oil ready to go for your bowl of ramen. This is a step that I think a lot of people miss when they're trying to make ramen at home and it's very important, so don't forget it. All right, let's get into the tonkotsu soup making. Now, tonkotsu just means pork bone and the making of the soup actually is pretty simple. It just takes a long time because you're boiling it for a long time. So I got here a bunch of random pork bones. If you can get it, the best bone to use is what's called the genkotsu. It's the femur bone of the pig. Unfortunately, I can't get that easily here, so I just have a bunch of random pork bones I picked up at the supermarket. And I'm, these are frozen, so I'm gonna have to defrost them and rinse them out a little bit before I can get into making the soup. So an important step in making tonkotsu is the pre-boil. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get all this scum out of the bones before you make the real soup because it kind of discolors the soup and it makes it have a little bit of a funky taste. And you can use this to gauge how long you should be pre-boiling because after a while, this stuff will stop coming out. And so you'll see it's pretty much done coming out and it takes about 30 minutes to 40 minutes for it to get to this point. And so just do the pre-boil and then cool it down. And this is a very important step that a lot of people swear by is you have to pick off the meat and the cartilage from the bones as much as you can. And they say that if you leave the meat on the bones, it kind of discolors the soup. I don't know if this is true, but every single video that I've seen where Japanese people are making tonkotsu ramen, they do this. So I just do it too. And here is a pot full of uh, bones that have been cleaned to the best of my ability. This piece has a little bit of marrow in it, which is going to be really good for the soup. So we're going to take these bones and we're going to put them into a pressure cooker. I just have a instant pot here. I'm going to put them in and it's going to put enough water to cover them. And I can't remember how long I put this thing on for. I think probably about an hour uh, with the high pressure cooker setting. So we just want to pressure cook it for about an hour. I usually do the pressure cooking outside for a couple of reasons. One, it makes a mess as you can see when you let the pressure out and two this stuff smells pretty terrible in the beginning at least it takes a little while for the pork bones to really mellow out and uh, it'll make your house smell really bad if you do it inside after the hour or so of pressure cooking i let it boil for another two to three hours i can't really remember the exact timing but it was another two to three hours and then i let it cool and i put it in the fridge overnight a lot of people swear by the fridge method like cooling it down overnight and then eating the soup the next day I'm not sure if it makes a difference. I, I'm trying it for this one and we'll see how it goes. So actually at this point, if you wanted to make ramen right away, you could just use this, take out the bones, strain the bones out, heat this up, and you pretty much have a tonkotsu ramen if you mix it with the tare. Um, the recipe that I'm using I'm, it has some other things, so I'm gonna try it out. So they add some chicken feet. This is called mumiji in Japanese. I added just four here because I'm not really sure how much collagen comes out of these things. This is my first time using it added a bunch more water and just brought this to a boil and I let this go for about close to six hours five hours I think around there and basically what you're doing is just breaking down all the collagen in the, in the chicken feet and about an hour and a half to two hours before we're serving I added some green onion some round onion some garlic a head of cabbage and some ginger and also some niboshi which is like dried uh, fish I think it's dried sardines. And 
and I let that go for another hour and a half or two hours. And that's basically it. The soup looks like this after another two hours or so. And the only thing left is to strain the soup and it's done. All right, it's finally time to make the bowl of ramen. So into the bowl, two tablespoons of shoyu tare that we made in the previous video. One tablespoon of the chicken oil that you made earlier. This is chilled, so it looks like that. It will dissolve once you put some hot soup in there. 300 to 400 milliliters of broth. It depends how salty you want it. You can start with 300, taste it, and then if you want it, if it's too salty, you just add a little bit more broth. And that is your bowl of uh, soup for your tonkotsu ramen. We're using the homemade noodles, the same recipe that I did in my first video, and uh, we're gonna add these in. It's not the ideal noodles for this kind of ramen, but it's okay. This is the chashu that we made in the previous video. This is a ajidama or like a soft boiled egg that's been soaking in a dashi for about a day. This is some full menma. Menma is like bamboo shoots that's kind of like fermented. You can't really do it easily at home so I just made this recipe for full menma and a bunch of green onion. And that's basically it. That's a bowl of tonkotsu ramen. Um, please give it a try. Let me know how it turns out. And uh, thank you all for watching.